Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for holding this hearing. It's a very critical issue. And I want to thank you, our witnesses, for appearing before us today. Before I begin, I'd, well, as I begin, I want to mention two things, particularly since this is this committee's first trade hearing of this new Congress. First, I want to welcome Ms. Cindy Allen of FedEx Logistics. She traveled here today from Tennessee, the home of one of our new Finance Committee members, Senator Marsha Blackburn. We're very happy to have you both here. And of course, I'm also glad to see Senators Tillis and Johnson here, who have also just joined the committee, but we're going to have to wait a little bit longer to get some of the fine folks from your states here before the committee. Second, I want to thank Senator Cassidy for his leadership on the issue of customs modernization. He spends a lot of time thinking about how to ensure our custom laws are effectively enforced and how to better harness the data to that effect. We all look forward to hearing his insights as we consider these issues further. Modernizing U.S. custom laws is fast becoming of critical importance. The last comprehensive update to our customs laws occurred exactly 30 years ago. A smart reform now will not only allow us to seize new opportunities, but also to confront the rise of opportunists, some of those Senator Wyden has already mentioned. Opportunity is out there, right now, waiting for the law to catch up with it. The drafters of the last modernization could not possibly foresee the technological tools available to us today or the sheer number of small businesses that now take advantage of it, international trade, or the benefit uh, to consumers from widespread access to e-commerce. But with any new opportunity, unfortunately, also comes the opportunists. Modernization is imperative to counter both existing threats trying to make their way into this country and those on the horizon. At the El Paso Port of Entry, the brave men and women of the U.S. Customs and Border Protection, or CBP, seized in just the month of January alone over 327 pounds of methamphetamine, 139 pounds of cocaine, and 42 pounds of fentanyl. We've got to close the flow of these drugs over our southern border. On January 29, CBP officers at Chicago's O'Hare seized counterfeit jewelry and apparel that would have been worth over $686,000 if it had been genuine. CBP is also actively enforcing a number of withhold release orders and the Uyghur Forced Labor Implementation Act to keep goods made with forced labor out of this country. The good news about customs modernization is that it's not an either-or proposition when it comes to trade facilitation and trade enforcement. By making smarter use of data collection, we can reduce burdens on both lawful commerce and CBP personnel so that we can better focus resources on enforcement challenges. Let's take an example. Something as simple as importing wet pet food. Importation currently requires the importer to submit data to assist three of CBP's partner agencies, USDA, FDA, and the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA. These agencies cumulatively want 54 data elements, but 21 of these elements are redundant and there are 16 inconsistent definitions for the same data. Under these circumstances, the importer faces the challenge of figuring out what exactly is required, and our law enforcement authorities may end up with information of little utility. We can and must do better, particularly given some of the supply chain bottlenecks we see at our ports. Fortunately, we, fortunately, we are well situated to attack the modernization effort today because CBP and its advisory committees started thinking about many of these issues in 2018 when CBP launched its 21st Century Customs Framework Initiative to develop ideas about what a modernized custom regime might look like. Combining CBP's efforts with additional expertise, including that of our witnesses today, we can create an efficient and effective framework. New tools, including automation, can help us identify risks at an early stage. We need a system where contraband never enters the United States in the first place. 
By catching threats early, we can save CBP from engaging in lengthy investigations on U.S. soil to figure out whether something is a threat or not. A modern system will also expedite lawful commerce to get essential inputs faster into our manufacturers and goods to our consumers. To sum up, smart customs modernization will fight and deter crime, create jobs, move goods faster, and save Americans money all at the same time. This is precisely the type of work this committee was set up to do and does well. I look forward to working with my colleagues and the committee on taking that challenge. Now I look forward to hearing from our witnesses and their ideas about how to improve our customs laws. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hey, 